It's a pretty interesting realisation as a photographer to learn that it's not even about the photos. Which is pretty ironic considering we spend so much effort making them. So starting baseline. Mm -hmm. Why are we making this film? <laughs> it's an excellent question. <laughs> Okay, this is going to be interesting. Probably should put all these bottles away, hey? First light, I'll just bring in and light this studio up a little. Do you think I always just talk off camera? Yeah. Comes in out of the mist. Can you tell us who is Matt Reed? When I get asked who I am at the moment, I say I'm a photographer. And Internally, my reaction to that's changed over the years. When I first started calling myself a photographer, I felt like a fraud because <laughs> didn't come from the industry, hadn't been doing it for decades. It was a lot of figuring it out. So I'm thinking we just set up in the middle, just want a sense of studio without it looking like try hard and put everything we own behind the camera or behind the person. And then there was this time that it was super exciting. Like I remember I was driving to a shoot and thinking, I'm a photographer. Like, oh my goodness, I'm a photographer. This is awesome. Okay. Better. Now it's like, well, I guess I do that a bit, but it feels a lot more than that. Where are we going? Where do you want to go? Where are you taking us? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go this way. Uh, why are we here? Mm. Tell me a little about Phil Proud Walk Tom. Where did that come from? The notion of like, or the the notion's not the right word. Let me just navigate this so I don't... Please don't kill us. <laughs> Please don't. Please let us finish this film. The feel proud, walk tall is like important to all humans. And I only realised like two years ago why that was so significant. I was having lunch with another photographer and he said, why? I instantly teared up. And I'm not even sure if I answered him, but the answer was because I was just not confident. I was a, like a hide under the bed kid. When someone came and visited, I was under the bed. And just no confidence. And that's still a thing I struggle with today is, you know, I've been doing this a lot now, actually quite good at it, but still there's like an massive insecurity or a, like a lack of confidence that's just there, just like waiting to do its thing. From as tiny as I can remember to now is just picking things up and making things with it. Being a farm boy, that's a big part of it. It's Lego or go-kart, outdoor or indoor matchsticks, building sheds or 
building jumps for the motorbike. You're just making things. You always have something in your hands, something in your head. You kind of think things up and then make it. And that was my life as a kid and that's kind of a big part of my days now is thinking things up and making it. So the one consistent thing in my life has been making. Cool. Kate looks about and she gets in the clear something like that. I know, I know. Totally should go in. Yeah. Here we go. The classic filming the filming the filming. Yeah. <laughs> the filming the filming. I just emailed Flo, so hopefully it'll be 1 11 a.m. She just emailed back and said, absolutely, see you then. Cool. Okay, we'll be back. Okay. Wardrobe, hair, makeup. Looking, looking amazing. <laughs> One of our crazy ideas was, imagine if we could have a shop where we teach people how to play didgeridoo. That would be awesome. And somehow, within a few weeks, we'd signed up a lease ordered some didgeridoos from the Northern Territory and they were on their way and we were going to set up shop. Hi, I'm Sanshi, here at the Didgeridoo Bread in the heart of Fremantle, Western Australia. I'll show you around. Far out. So it was like 20 years ago and from day one we set up a website to sell the instruments online and to sell them people needed to be able to see them and they need to be able to hear them and know about them and figure out which one's best for them. When it comes to selecting your didgeridoo online, you have a massive range to choose from. You can even listen to how it sounds. The long journey began of figuring out how to do that in the best way possible. So in hindsight, that was an awesome testing ground because I wasn't attached to photography for the act of photography. It's like a business tool, we needed it to work and everything we made was, did it work? If yes, it stays. If it didn't, it goes. And I realise now that that's quite a different motivation for making photos and videos than just setting out to make something beautiful. learnt in that business probably the most important thing that's still at the top of the list today. There was this point in time where we looked at the website and realised that it was all product, 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 product. And we thought, where's the life? Where's the people? Where's the atmosphere of the store? And so we did this experiment where we injected what was going on in the business into every single page of the website. G'day, Benny here. Every day we're taking your orders, packing them up and selling them around the world to you. And it was kind of a line in the sand experiment. We didn't really have people pictures and then we did. We loaded it up. So that experiment, we expected sales to increase so we expected things to get better but I didn't expect that the tone or the interaction with our customers would completely change. Hi, welcome to Digital Dojo. <laughs> you could feel it in the emails. They were like, hey guys, we're coming to Frio next March. Can't wait to come and visit. Emails coming through were like, hey Sanchi, where did you get the shoes you're wearing? And even people visiting the store, you see them like walk in the door for the first time and they had that feeling of like, we're here. And it's time for Didgeridoo Dojo Dream Sale. Doo -doo -doo. So, what is circular breathing? Hi, Sanshi here. I'm going to show you how to put the beeswax onto the didgeridoo. It was those intangible things that I actually didn't expect, and that's when the lights come on and it's like, oh, uh, we're onto something here. And that's something that still cogs turning now when we roll into any business.
There was a point in time where I got more excited about figuring out what photos and videos helped that business than all the other aspects of running the business. And it was about then where I transitioned full time into commercial photo and filmmaking land. And that's when all the little lessons that I kind of learnt took a back step for a little bit while I got consumed with how to figure out this craft at a professional level. My name's Matt Reed. I'm a commercial photographer and owner of Perth Product Photography. Yeah, this is going to be good. I like it. You'll probably sit like here-ish, I'm guessing. Wherever, really, because this screen can be anywhere. Yeah. Hello. Nice. Hello. We can't see you. Oh. Every job for the first three years was like the first time I've ever done that thing. And that was pretty scary. They're not going to be big scenes, are they? Kind of like A4-ish max for a bit of chain or a bit of... Because my background was products with the musical instruments, I felt like that was my comfort zone. Like I'd photograph products a lot. And so when I first started, it's like, I'm a product photographer. We obsessively fuss over the most minute details, but you have to, and it's what really sets you apart. In terms of this week, it's a fairly typical week in being pretty random. I was always confused why people were inquiring and what they were asking me to do. Like, before long, I was being asked to do jobs that I've never done before. LB entering the portal. Being paid to go to a place that I've never seen and meet people that I don't even know yet to do something that I haven't done before. So there was always confusion, like, why are these people <laughs> contacting me? But they did, and I kept doing it, and the skill set kept broadening. If it was there in real life, at least you get a bit of the reflection, like that background reflecting onto it a little bit, which it can still look photoshopped on. It's actually it was scary, but it wasn't like hard to get out of bed. It was hard to get in bed because I would be like practicing this thing. There was no real YouTube at that point. You couldn't look up YouTube and go, how do I photograph an X, Y, Z? And there's a billion tutorials that show you how to do that. It was a bit harder back then. Like if you're wanting to become a photographer, it's like, that's the question. Like, how do you, how do you be a photographer? I would comb the internet, try and find something relevant to that job I was about to do, buy the course, watch it, basically order everything the person was using in that explanation because it's like well they use it that's that seems to work and so there was a lot of like consuming buying practice go do the shoot Whew, went well next inquiry comes in it's different figure out how to do it buy what i see people using try and learn that equipment go do it <laughs> and that rinsed and repeated for a long time should we walk or should we? Do you want to? Eh? Can do a little bit, a little bit. Let me give you a quick rundown on a new approach we have to group photos of your team. It's fascinating when friends ask me, what have you been up to this week? I literally like to get the calendar out and go, oh yeah, we did this shoot yesterday. That was a lot of fun. Oh, the day before we were in the city. And, and so, yeah, there's not a lot of reflection time. Heading towards our final location for the EFM shoot. And it's gonna be a ripper. But boy, a lot's happened to get up to this point. When I very first started photography, all my attention was on how to operate this camera. And the buttons, the dials, the composition. Always the workhorse. And so I would not even see what I'm taking a photo of. It's the classic person's collar sticking up. Like, how did you not see that? taking that shot it's like you just don't see it because there's not that much processing power when everything's dedicated towards the camera this little bag of tricks goes with us everywhere once that gets more competent that starts running in the background and then it's like ah oh, i can actually look at what i'm pointing it at and then you go through that process and once that becomes more instinct then it's like oh i can actually look at the person <laughs> <laughs> the one thing with photography, it's like 10% camera and 90% a whole bunch of other things that will be thrown at you. Oh, I'll probably move around actually. 
But if you're manning that, you can just follow. Movement's cool, isn't it? There are very few people that like having a camera pointed at them. Like, you hold a camera in front of anyone and just watch the life drain out of their face. It's just normal. I 100% believe that it's our job as photographers to create the environment and the feeling and the ease that people in front of the camera can look their best. And I think that allows us to capture those pictures that have a little spark, a little emotion, a little something going on. What do you think should be in the shot? It's a bit like graphical, kind of like, that's wonky, but like this sort of scene. And if we get, yeah, and if we get people walking through, just like in conversation, working. I'm Matt, by the way. Grundy, nice to meet you, mate. Can we bring you both a metre this way just to get rid of that hole out of the view? Yep, there's great. Uh, thank you. Beautiful. And can we go one more time? Thank you for your patience. There was this experience that I had 10 years ago now, but it's still vivid in my mind and this was possibly the first kind of feel proud walk tall moment that I had with a client and my job was to go to Port Hedland and photograph the new fire station that was built at the airport and so I rock up there go to the gate and call the guy up comes Mark He's from Queensland. He hasn't seen his family for months. Everyone's gone. He's in mass cleanup mode that just keeps going forever. He's tired and the site's not ready. And some photographer from Perth rocks up with his camera gear to showcase the product that's not ready yet. So it was tense to start with, understandably. And we worked together and started working on the, you know, the photography and what to show and what angle and there was this moment that night and we were on the tarmac of the airport and the camera was on tripod and it was framed up for the fire station and the light was beautiful and Mark was here and we were just chatting at that point. It's like we we're a bit early and we we're just waiting for perfect light. So you just have random chit chat. And then I looked around and he just looked like perfect where he was sitting. Couldn't have asked him to like, pose any better and I knew if I faffed around and pointed a camera at him that photo would go away he'd move or scratch you know do something and so I took the camera kept chatting took the camera off and then made sure my settings were right and then I said hey Mark do you want a photo and he's like nah nah I don't want a photo and I said Are you sure you can send it to your family and he's like okay take your damn photo and that's click and then that was it. I showed him on the back of the screen and there was a turning point. So from that point on, our conversations with each other became all about that photo. Getting that photo to his family, getting it on his computer, like that was a feel proud moment. And it's like, that was effortless for me. That was like a 60 second thing. And it's like, wow, we have the ability to have that impact on people with no effort whatsoever. It's like, surely that's the greatest gift we can give to people. And from that point, the seed was planted where, ah, it's not really about the photos. The photos need to be excellent and above expectations and meet the brief and da 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 da. It's like, of course, like we're being hired to deliver that service. That's easier. What's consuming my front of mind is, how do you make this work as a business? How do you assemble a team? How do, you, how do they feel good? How do we complete projects at a level that exceed all our expectations? And so for me personally, 20 years on, that's what's running in the front of my mind. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, and it's, I think it's a process. Once you learn that, it goes back. What we've become good at is having a camera in an environment, taking photos and videos in a way that doesn't make it look like there's a camera in an environment. And I, I try not to be cheesy, hey? Well, Kate. <laughs> Glad you asked, Kate. <laughs>
which would probably be better than the actual, than what we were going for before. Because yeah. that wasn't, that was tough. <laughs> Now I feel very confident to go in anywhere with anything and make the people in front of the camera feel good. I'm very much a work in progress to, to do that within our, within our walls, within our team. And as a business, we've expanded, contracted a number of times over the years and everything's the business owner's responsibility, really. And there's just no escaping it. If you're going to operate a business that feeds people's creativity and bank accounts, it has to work. There's just such a mixed bag of skill set that you need to operate that well. And very quickly I realized that I, I couldn't do it by myself. I loved this. I was not great at this. And I could do this, but it just drained the heck out of me. And if I had to do that, I would rather just go do something else. I might jump down on that level with them. Okay. Just get some, like, facey shots. Oh, yeah, definitely. Hey, hey, this might be a nice gimbal shot, because this curve here um, has the camera backpack and the drone case. Can you just bring them that way? Just got them in shot. Where do you reckon, Hen, in terms of eye line and... Looks good. What about if you're in here? Do you want to come back? Yeah. Watch this. Yeah. I know, yeah. Big hole. Super. Big asshole. Being a farm boy, used to being by myself, think up an idea, go do it, make it. Doesn't matter whether anyone sees it or not, think up another idea, go make it. To transition from that, which has been most of my life, into a good communicator, bringing everyone like the ducklings, mum bringing on the ducklings across the, like that's very hard for me to learn that. It's so freaking hard. You all right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I started crying. <laughs> what are you doing to me? <laughs> I want to cheese. <laughs> Yeah, pan, pan right, pan right. <laughs> mm. That's all right. It's actually probably a lot like parenting. You try your little heart out. You're good at some things. You're terrible at other things. There you got me going. Yeah, I think you accidentally bang up people along the way. And get pretty banged up too. Hmm. Just pausing for a minute. Come a major cropper a couple of years ago has trying to do that. They're still in, still fixing that. Mm. Hello, welcome to the beach. What, morning, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Good, good down there? Ah, uh, well done. <laughs> so this on a good day is awesome and this on a bad day is awesome. For me feeling proud is to be honest fleeting moments that just comes like a flicker. Comes in feel it it's gone and it's just at random times or random moments. It's not a constant state. Yeah, you're, these are pretty cool in the foreground, aren't they? Maybe. I don't know. 
The time where I valued the beach the most would, would have been our toughest year in business when we had the most people employed. Our business was going through the biggest crisis of people and uh, everything really. We were like in debt and just everything was a struggle. To get anything to work was a complete struggle. Every like card falling felt like that was the last card that was gonna fall. And we're, we're good, we're good, okay, we're good. Thank goodness that got out of the way. Let's get going. And then another card would fall. It's like, woof, didn't expect that. Thank goodness that's done. Let's, let's go, let's go. And then another card and another card. It's never just like on Monday you get an email saying it's all over. It's no, it's like there's always hope for it to work until, until you get to the point where you're like, this is, actually not going to work. I need to reset. If we go this way, will that take us to the stairs? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go that way? Yeah. I found confidence and pride levels were zero in the cleanup of it all. And then throughout the cleanup, and I, I got back in, I was doing everything in terms of the projects. And I rediscovered that I was good at it. <laughs> Slow down. Slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> Dunk. <laughs> the feel proud, walk tall is important to like all humans. And of course that translates internally to the team as well. That I found in my experience, a different skill set. I'm so like done. Okay, this, done, and that, that would be exhausting to most people. And what I'm learning is, like, it just robs people of their feeling of, like, achievement and feeling proud because it's, like, forgotten what project, next one. And so clearly there's more things to learn. But fortunately we get to live another day and have another go at learning those things. Got the camera in the housing, spending the day below surface. Loving it here. It's okay just to lean on this ledge. Actually, this is quite a nice back. Yeah. Yeah, so that like tracking yeah. could be cool. Could be cool. Do you reckon we can get him up? Yeah. Just got. He loves it. Yeah. Okay. It's actually a nice shot. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. No worries. Cool. But you yeah. cross it, like Things like that make me twitch too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at what happened last Tuesday. Like, we turn up to a brand new site with people we don't know. We wheel cameras in, and we spend time with them. And that feeling of this, like you see people like relax, the shoulders go down, but they walk taller, and that's partly for the photos, but they haven't seen anything yet. It's all the experience of it all. It's all the interaction. It's how we interact with people that allows them to feel good about themselves that then, of course, like comes across best on camera. Hey, man, how was today? Today was really enjoyable. It was like, there was just this general kind of feeling of happy today. Everyone was nice, everyone was kind, everyone was patient, everyone was up for it. There was, just felt like full team effort today. And yeah, it never felt like a drag, it never felt like a challenge. It was just a bunch of people making stuff. Yeah, yeah it's that one. Got five minutes to look your yeah. The team and Matt are just so patient so great they have a super amazing sense of humor which makes every job just even more fun we get along really well and the product is just exceptional every time a huge focus for us is the connections like people are sensitive people we know in two seconds if we're in good hands or this person doesn't know what they're talking about or they're pretending to and it's like this is like we already know <laughs> with a very short amount of time. So what we're naturally good at is bond with the people you're working with in that much time 
and then you're on the same team. You can see it, you can read the body language, like people relax, and then now we're colleagues. We're not a supplier coming in to do a thing. No, we're in the trenches together. We're making this thing, and then like instantly there's trust. Do you want any table action with them? Keep it up. This isn't going to sit right here, is it? No. No, it's going to be back. We're going to be, we're going to be out of the way. You need room to do your thing. Do you want like, you want me slightly behind Mike so you can see him? Slightly behind, please. And yep. less of like a buyer, more involved in the project in some way. We don't have a vested interest in selling a particular type of photography or film or this or that. That's never been a focus or a motivation or so that can all go away. Um, and we can just, I would say, approach the situation unbiased from their point of view and create the next best thing that they need to help them do what they need to do. So we're going into these random environments with all these interesting people and through the act of photography and filmmaking done the right way so the experience is amazing you see people lift up and you get to show them how good they look doing what they do and that's hugely uplifting for people who just think that oh this is everyday life The real value is the how we do it. It's all the little befores and afters and around and during and that's where you can have the biggest impact on the experience of everything and that's what we find keeps people coming back. <laughs> so starting baseline, mm -hmm. why are we making this film? <laughs> it's an excellent question. <laughs> We're making this film this way to show that an engaging, honest, substantial story, well told, is better than any polished, glossy brochure marketing video. Because all the goodness is always there in an organisation, in a person. It doesn't matter the scale of the business, there's always so much good stuff. If you just show the good stuff, it will have a positive effect on the business. So yeah, I have a lot of energy for people stories because it exists everywhere. Underneath the gloss and the varnish and the sprinkles and the logos, there's like good people stories. And that's very satisfying to make and very satisfying to watch. When I sit on the couch with soup, I'm not interested in watching corporate videos or TV ads, just doesn't excite me at all. But I love stories. Stories and music are the two things that give me goosebumps and tears the most. For me, that shift into the human stories feels like it's in another gear of enthusiasm and excitement and figuring it all out and the best way to do it. And, you know, it's, it's using things that I've used for tens of thousands of hours, but there's a new, uh, Enthusiasm would be the word around it. And so, yeah, there's an unlock, a new gear. Hello. Hey, we're recording. <laughs> As we've been going through this project, something that has become a core feature within our documentary is that Matt doesn't have time to reflect very often. He is so focused 
on making things and getting the job done and doing amazingly well and catering and being kind to everyone else around him that he doesn't often stop and recognise the good in what he's doing and also how good he is at doing it. Um, so currently, while I'm meant to be editing this brand video you're watching right now, I'm actually editing our showreel. The aim of this is to put all of that amazing work that Matt's done in the past and put it in a way that's on display that makes Matt stop for a second and see what good he's done and is doing and be able to reflect on those projects for just a little while. Let's go! Take it this is my chair? Yeah. Feels like I need popcorn. Awesome. Ready? Yeah, ready. What is a smile? Is it muscles pulling? Or is it something more? Have you enjoyed this process, Matt? Of the, f the filming? Filming the brand, really? Yeah. Yeah, because... Um, seeing any story come together is satisfying. Mm. Fine. So, so this is another story, and like to see it actually work, the bits of the puzzle wriggle into place. Mm. It's, it's cool. Is it more than just a response to a joke? Do you want to sit with mummy? Do you want to sit next to Matt? Is it more than saying cheese? I can see you warming up to it, and it's time. Uh, why are we here? Mm. Tell me a little about Phil Proud Walk Tall. Where did that come from? There's a bunch of words for it, whether it's like confidence, satisfaction, it's this or that. It's just this feeling of like this. It's almost like dough rising. There's just this feeling of up. Is it conquering a goal? They say if you leave something in a better place than where you start, you've done a great job. Or is it making something no one has ever seen before? Some things just aren't in the rational, verbal parts of our soul, so it gives people another language for them to explore what's going on for them. Fortunately, like, our job puts us in a position where we get to do that and get to be around that. Is it watching your empire grow? Or seeing how far you've come? Today, thousands of projects later, I still enjoy this, the cameras and the lights and the hands-on setting things up. I don't even have to be touching anything or I just love being around it. Storytelling is one of the main things in life. I like working with my teachers and playing with all my friends. Is it standing together with a shared voice? Or being the only one awake to see the sunrise? Or is it something more? Is it finding joy in the little things? There's all these different words to explain it, but where we got to with that is that feel proud, walk tall. When you're walking tall, it's like, you feel like you can take on anything, you're good to go. And that's an ideal state to navigate your life in. Great people alone don't achieve much. Great people working together, that's what actually make us great. It's just that act of nothing exists, we do some things, something exists, and it's just still fulfilling. But the act of making something with people who are contributing to making something, it's still a happy place. Is it finding what makes your heart sing? So what is a smile? Can you tell us? Can you show us? Are you proud? I feel much prouder in this moment right now than an hour ago when we started recording. What makes you smile? And how do you want to share it with the world?
It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> cool? Yeah. Cut. Yeah, cool. Pretty wordy, I'm always wordy. I reckon we're good. Yep. Just make something. Good. Cool. Lunch time. Thank mm -hmm. you.